I'd like to call the November 19th, 2013 meeting of the Planning Board to order. The Board will be considering tonight's agenda in the following order. Number one, approval of the minutes from September 17th, 2013. Approval of the minutes from the October 15th Planning Board meeting. Number three, seized gourmet market site plan approval extension. Number four, old Hayfield Lane private road review, followed by public comment on items not on tonight's agenda, followed by adjournment. So first of all, the approval of the minutes, and this will be from the September 17th meeting. Any comments, any questions about those minutes? No? Good to me. Okay, then would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve Liza? the minutes from September 17th. September 1, second. Second. Carol Ann, any discussion on that? No discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. Then let's now do the approval of the minutes from October 15th. Any comments or questions about those minutes? Would anyone like to make a motion on those minutes from October 15th? Sure, I have a comment. They were good and they were helpful in preparing for this meeting. So thank you, Hiromi. And I'd like to make a motion to approve them. Thank you, Liza. Second? Anyone? Joe, second. second. Oh, thank you. I didn't see you, Joe. Appreciate that. Any discussion on those meetings? All those in favor? All those at the meeting. Okay. All those opposed <laughs> and abstaining. Abstaining. There we go. Thank you. Could you mark me as abstaining on the previous ones? Okay. One abstention for the September 17th, and there were two abstentions. Two abstentions for the October 15th. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Next item on the agenda: Seas Gourmet Market Site Plan Approval Extension. Mike Concan is requesting an extension of the site plan approval granted November 20th, 2012, for Seas Gourmet Market, a new retail, 28-seat restaurant an office building to be located at 349 Ocean House Road. The request will be reviewed under section 19-9-4B4, site plan extension. Excuse me, Victoria, I recused myself originally from this, so I'm going to be doing that again. Okay, thank you, Joe. Would the applicant's representative, um, well, this has been placed on the consent agenda, so if any board member would like to discuss this application, um, then a motion will be, need to be made to put it on the regular agenda. Would anyone like to make a motion to put this onto the regular agenda? Okay. Otherwise, then would anyone um, like to make a motion for the board to consider? Thank you, Carol Ann. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the request submitted and facts presented, the request of Mike and Cannon for C's Gourmet Market located at 349 Ocean House Road for a one-year extension of the Planning Board approval granted November 20, 2012, be approved with an extension to November 20, 2014. Motion by Carol Ann. Second. Liza. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion? And we have one member recusing, so that'd be six. Okay. The next item on our agenda is Old Hayfield Lane Private Road Review. Stephanie Boggs is proposing a private road to be constructed within the Paper Street of Elizabeth Road located north of Reef Road to create access to a back lot located at the end of Elizabeth Road. The new private road would be named Old Hayfield Lane. The application was deemed complete and a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. The plan will be reviewed under section 16-2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. This application will be addressed in the following format. The town planner will provide an overview, followed by a presentation by the applicant. Then uh, the public is welcome to comment on the application. After the hearing, the board may begin discussions. And then we will conclude with a motion for the board to consider. Maureen, do you have an overview for us? Yes. I do, and I'm going to pass this out. The applicant um, already has a copy. 
this is intended to be an aid for the board, and if you don't find it to be an aid, feel free to ignore it. Uh, but the application tonight is for a private road to be built in a paper street, Elizabeth Road, to access a back lot. Um, the private road standards are the same as the town local road standards. And the applicant has asked for some waivers of those standards. So on the bottom of the page, I have represented basically the town standard is for a 22 foot wide paved road with an 18 inch deep gravel base, the entire width of the 22 feet. Uh, the applicant's proposal is on the top of this page, and that is showing a, an 18 foot wide gravel base, 18 inches deep. 14 feet of that would be paved, and then there'd be two foot wide gravel shoulders on either side. And they're also shifting it five feet off center of the right of way. All of that intended to retain, retain four existing trees. At your last meeting, uh, the board asked town staff to provide a recommendation on how much of a road you need to build in order to satisfy a certain level of uh, expected volume. And not surprisingly, the position of town staff has in the past and continues to be that they don't support waivers. Um, they, they like to adhere to the town standard uh, almost exclusively. So what you got as a recommendation was uh, basically a 22 foot wide gravel base where the actual traveled surface would be 18 feet, wood, 18 feet wide travel paved surface and then two foot wide gravel shoulders on either side. And um, that would require uh, more than likely the removal of four existing mature trees. Uh, when the applicant received the staff's comments, um, they approached the fire chief and suggested a compromise, which would include going back to the applicant's original proposal, which is at the top of the page, and also potentially limiting the use of the private road to just one lot, and also uh, allowing, uh, requiring that any house that was going to be constructed with access off of this road have to have a sprinkler in it. Um, the sprinkler requirement in, in place of meeting standards is something you have done before. Um, you can't just unilaterally decide that people have to have sprinklers in their homes. But if you were to do that as part of a waiver of, a, of width, or in some cases you've done it in, in order to um, compensate for an inadequate amount of water supply to fight a fire. So that's, that's an option that's in front of you tonight. Okay. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. So the option at the top is for access to the lot and back, one house on that, and the existing house that's already accessed from the gravel road. The, the option at the top is for a private road approval, and that would provide access for any lot that had adequate frontage on that private road. So that has, there's no limit to that access. The board could choose to limit it. Um, oh, but any new houses would need to be sprinkled? Yes, or you could do that, or you could do both. And the fire chief is attending the meeting this evening. I should have mentioned that earlier. I expected that you might have questions for him and asked him if he would be here, and he's very generously agreed to sit in, and so he's available for questions. Any more questions for Maureen on this? Then at this point, um, I'd like the um, applicant, if you could please summarize any changes that have been made. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. And I represent uh, Stephanie Boggs for this uh, private road application. <clears throat> I would like to, um, before I get into my presentation, uh, there's just one minor correction on this, Maureen. <clears throat> what we had proposed was a 14-foot wide paved surface with two-foot wide grass shoulders. Okay. And that's what we have in our application. So there would be gravel, but then there would be loam and seed on top. On the base, but yep. grass on the top. Correct. <clears throat> um, the um, the changes that we have made to the uh, to the plan since our last submission. Um, are all documented on the October 31st letter that you should have for you. Uh, going down that list very quickly, 
Uh, all, all of the plans have been stamped by a professional engineer. On page two, uh, the, uh, the board, if you remember, asked us to uh, look into the number of lots that could be um, developed along Old Hayfield Lane. And we provided uh, in your packet, I believe it's the last page, uh, an eight and a half by 11 exhibit uh, with the, <coughs> the lots, the potential lots that could be developed off Old Hayfield Lane. There are a total of four. Uh, which include the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ham's lot, which is on the east side of the proposed road. There are two lots on the west side that are part of uh, the Shore Acres subdivision and that are grandfathered. And then the fourth lot would be the Boggs lot in the rear, the four and a half acre rear lot. So those are the four potential lots um, that could be developed off of this, off of this roadway. Or, actually, there are three additional, uh, in addition to uh, uh, the Ham's property. We have uh, documented the meets and bounds for the proposed turnaround. They, those are shown on the plan. We've added uh, a number of notes, notes five through nine, as well as plan references uh, these refer to uh, previous amended subdivision plans, uh, legal rights of the Boggs lot, uh, and renaming of the Elizabeth Road to Old Hayfield Lane. All of that information has been documented on, the, on sheet two. Uh, at the time, unfortunately, we were not able to connect with Mr. and Mrs. Ham regarding the screening of the roadway. Um, and what we had shown on your plan, the plans that you have, are, um, are plants, basically a, a edge of, uh, of lilacs that we proposed. Um, <laughs> shortly after we submitted the plans, uh, I did speak with uh, Matt Ham, and we talked about uh, what he would like to see in terms of screening and that uh, was a fence. He would like to see an eight foot high fence. So we have revised the plants, the ones that are on the PowerPoint this evening. We've removed the plants and we've added a fence, an eight foot high solid wood fence, which extends from his driveway up to the existing oak trees. And those are on the plan as a note that is located right here that refers to that, uh, refers to the fence. Uh, and we revised, uh, a minor revision is that we re revised the planning board signature block. Um, as I mentioned, the turnaround easement uh, is in also included in your packet. There's a, uh, a meets and bounds written description um, as well as maintenance agreement for the turnaround. And the last item uh, is monumentation. And the monumentation was on the previous plan, but Maureen asked us to document it in our cover letter, which I did. Um, that's, those are the, that's the extent of the revisions that we made um, to the plans. Um, and now with regard to the road width, uh, I just want to mention a few, a few points. Um, aside from the stated purpose of establishing legal rights for the applicant to access the back lot, the physical design of this roadway has always been, right from the very beginning, is to make this roadway fit uh, the topography uh, as closely as possible. In other words, to, to minimize the, uh, the disturbance of the, of the land, to minimize the cut and fill, to minimize blasting. Um, and we feel that we have done that. Um, the other really strong point that, that we, uh, our goal was to retain the four oak trees that are all within the right of way of this paper street. 
<coughs> uh, this, of course, is in addition to providing a safe means of access uh, to the rail lot as well as providing emergency access. Uh, we therefore proposed uh, the 18 foot wide section, road section, that consists of 14 foot wide travel way with two foot wide grass shoulders on either side. Um, we, I, I just want to remind the board that we talked about this at length at the workshop meeting. Um, and uh, we, we talked about examples that, have, that this board has uh, approved in the past that are very similar to this section. Uh, we talked about the waivers that would be required in order to accomplish this. And it was our opinion that the board, or the majority of the board, board if not all of you, were uh, agreed with this approach in that you provided us with a direction uh, to go to, to minimize the, the uh, road width, to minimize the amount of pavement. Um, so that's, that's what we did. Um, these oak trees, uh, there, are, uh, there are photographs in the, I believe, the original uh, booklet we submitted. This is a, a view from Reef Road looking up the Ham's driveway. Uh, the oak trees uh, are at the top of the knoll, and as you can see, they're, they're, uh, they're mature oak trees. They're, they're very large. Um, there they are again. Uh, these are the three, and then there's one further down uh, the Paper Street. Um, so that you know, basically the reason why we're asking for the waivers, uh, in other words, to, to offset the center line of the roadway five feet, to reduce the, the traveled way, um, was to basically preserve these oak trees. Um, if, we, uh, if, we are if we have to widen this roadway to town standards, uh, it more than likely will uh, really get into the roots of these trees and eventually they'll die. Uh, these oak trees uh, also provide a, a very nice separation between Mr. and Mrs. Ham's uh, rear yard, um, they have a, a deck out on the rear yard, um, as well as a visual screen to their property. So, um, as I mentioned, that this is what basically uh, drove uh, our request to for these waivers. Uh, we want to do the right thing. I'm sure you, the board, wants us to do the right thing. Um, and uh, we hope that the board will agree to reduce the allow us to reduce the standards. Um, and you know we're we're in favor of uh, you know having the condition of uh, requiring the house to be sprinkled in order to, to get these waivers. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, at this time, we're going to open this up for questions. Um, well, actually, yeah. Um, we actually want to open up for the public comment, and then the board will come. So at this time, would you like to approach and you have any comments? <coughs> Thank you, Matthew Ham, uh, Six Reef Road. Uh, as as John was saying, um, Dr. Medi and Dr. Medi and Dr. Boggs um, uh, have rights as landowners that support their um, their ability to access the land in the back. And so, my wife Dawn and I um, are you know we're supportive of that. We understand it, and uh, we uh, also have been uh, very. Uh, grateful to the Boggs and the Medis for uh, spending time with us, uh, very transparent conversations. I think it was evident tonight from the uh, uh, conversation that John had uh, earlier that describes uh, our interests in a very transparent manner. Um, from our perspective, 
the way our house is situated on our lot, if we were to see the private, uh, private road be developed and it was wider than 14 feet and the uh, presumption that these mature trees actually would have to be taken down, it would have a, a dramatic um, detriment to our privacy uh, as well as to probably the value of our home. Um, the backside of our house really would become very um, highly visible. So we're very um, concerned about that, and we think that Dr. Boggs and Dr. Meddy have um, uh, bent over backwards to be um, transparent, as I said before, as well as to be accommodating um, to us. So we're uh, supportive of the 14-foot wide road, um, and we would hope the planning board would uh, um, look at this at, in a favorable light as well. A couple of the points that uh, we just wanted to make is that um, we're, um, we understand that, um, that Dr. Meddy and Dr. Boggs uh, may or may not activate this paper road in the future. Uh, we also appreciated the fact that they've worked with us in terms of uh, trying to accommodate with additional privacy um, by having a fence, um, by also working towards uh, some other plantings that we might want to put up. Uh, so again, we're, we're, we're trying to, I think, do the right thing and be reasonable about this in, in all cases. Um, we would just ask the planning board to um, consider this uh, and support this uh, uh, with uh, 14 feet uh, for the road. And once again, we want to thank the, uh, uh, Dr. Boggs and Dr. Meddy for their, uh, uh, for their support of our needs as well as um, supporting their needs as landowners. So thank you. Thank you. Would you like to uh, approach, or do, would you like to approach when called upon? Okay. Then at this point, if we have any questions as a board, uh, the public hearing is over, and we can start asking questions. Um, John, I do have a question for you before we uh, get into the road. I was looking at the map that you did provide for us, and um, as I look at this map, it's part of the material submitted. And I believe it might come into the conversation about how many building lots may be developed. As I was looking at this map, um, I know the Medi, uh, no, Dr. Boggs' lot is 4.5 acres, right at the top. Correct. And I looked at the hams online, and it says it's 1.49. Could you describe then, I had questions on not the Boggs' lot, not on the Pryor's lot, but this red to the uh, right of Elizabeth Lane, is that supposed to represent? And if you could just tell me exactly what that represents. It, it represents actually um, up until, what, a couple months ago, was it? Um, it was only the front portion of what I'm showing as, as the Hams lot. And just in the last couple months, they, they acquired a rare, some, some land to the rear. Um, so this map reflects their current ownership. So you're saying that that entire area is 1.49 acres? I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, if that 1.4 is current. Um, it appears that prior to acquiring that land, it was around, was it 0 0.7? Yes. And then you acquired 0.79? Okay, so 1.49, and I bring that up because this is part of the materials submitted, and it just doesn't look like that is 1.49 when you compare it to the, bog, the Boggs property of 4.5. So I question the accuracy of the map, first of all. Um, it, it almost appears like this was just hand-drawn in. It was hand-drawn in. Okay. Yeah. It, it doesn't appear that, um, okay. This, this, this is the best I could do yes. on... You know, Short this notes. is a reduction of the original subdivision plan. Um, I, I didn't have the actual deed to go by when I drew this. So that was my first question on right. this material submitted um, about how accurate this picture might be. So it's 
possible that this may not actually be a depiction of 1.498? Yeah, but th this, this exhibit intends to illustrate only the, just the number of lots. And I had a question on that, too. Okay. My other question was, um, when I started looking at the Ham property, I was trying to see if it was also part of Shore Acres, and I came to no conclusion. I can't conclude one way or the other. So I looked at the lot next door to them, mm -hmm. and that lot is part of Trundy. And so is the lot next to that one, and so on. So I don't feel 100% that this is part of Shore Acres. I have that question. And the last point I would make is, the hams are not in front of us. It's the bogs that are in front of us. So with all my questions in regards to the lot to the right side of Elizabeth Road, I do not feel comfortable saying that the lot colored in red shows a, a record that can be served by the private road in Old Hay Hayfield Lane without returning to the planning board for approval. I, I don't feel comfortable using this map or saying that that is accurate. And I don't know if now with the board, having heard this information, if you also have any comments or also feel that uh, that note that these lots can um, be served on this private road without coming back for planning board approval, you're comfortable with, you're neutral on, or you have any questions. Does anyone have any comments? or? I just want to make sure I understand what you're asking. You're saying that all three lots you're not comfortable, or just no. the one? No. Just the ham. We'll call it the ham lot, even though that's probably not the real size of it. Isn't the ham, the ham property now, what is it, shown as the ham property and the Nichols Trust property on your plan? Aren't they also similarly situated to the bottom lot in that there's the abut the subdivision plan properties but they're not part of them, but we've decided that they have access to the road because they're shown on the subdivision plan even though they're not part of the subdivision process? Um, my understanding, and or you can jump in, my understanding was um, the Boggs hired an attorney who was able to do a title search to bring it back and say that lot was part of Shore Acres. And no one has done that title search to say that, yes, the ham lot is part of Shore Acres. They have access to that road. And the hams are not in front of us. So I'm just saying I don't feel comfortable saying that the note on this map, that the, no one would have to come back to the planning board for approval on those lots. I don't feel comfortable using that. Well, I, I may misremember the attorney's letter, but I thought that he concluded that the Boggs parcel is basically as shown on this mm -hmm. subdivision plan, which was not a subdivided lot, but was shown on the plan. Mm -hmm. And part of me decided as adjacent land that we have rights in that road. And I think the Boggs parcel probably stands in the same footing that's shown on this plan albeit John's drawn in the, the, the back in the, side, the far side of the lot. I, I would say, no, I would differ. I would say this is accurately depicted the Boggs lot and the Pryor's lot, but the Ham's lot is not an accurate depiction. You, you understand that the Ham's have access off... The Ham's do, but you're saying that any of this can be subdivided without going in front of the planning board. Not subdivided. Uh, well, would have access. Right, the lots. And, the, and the hams already have access. Right, they already do. Right, so you, I'm sorry, your question then is what? Do, do the hams it, have rights to this private road? Well, I just did feel it was an accurate description and that um, if we're looking at, we're gonna get into the whole discussion of how many lots truly can be subdivided, or um, how many lots can be put into this land. And it just looks like there's a lot of land there and there's truly not a lot. Yeah, and, of and again, it, it, this exhibit was, did not intend to show um, the amount of land. I mean, the, the hams have one lot. They can't subdivide it right. any further than what it is today. Um, you know, it may be a little off, but that's, it was just rep to represent there are four lots that, okay. have, at, that have rights to, that, to the uh, proposed roadway without having to come back to the planning board for approval. Okay, so the Ham's lot is already has access. Yeah. 
that right. It already this, has. This, right. It, it already has. This is their driveway right there. Right. right. In the paper street. Okay. I just want to make sure it's clear that there's not that much land and that there's no confusion that there's the possibility of any subdivision no. of the lot, the Ham's lot, or that there could be further houses to that. That's other correct. Side. Okay. It's, 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 the lot is, is, um, it's too small. It doesn't meet the 80,000 square foot minimum lot size that would be required to, right. to subdivide it. So question for you, John, is, um, is that land that they bought behind them from the Elizabeth Nichols Trust not grandfathered as a legal lot? It's not uh, developed. Stephen, do you know the history of... Yes, Maureen. I can actually answer that. Okay, great. The, the Nichols lot was a corner-shaped lot. <clears throat> so it has frontage on Reef Road. It runs all the way to the back, and then it ran across the back of the Hams lot. When that lot was sold, the new owner sold to the Hams the land that was actually behind the Hams existing lot. Mm -hmm. But there's no subdivision grandfathering that we were able to find there. It was just uh, the, the lot that the Hams have was just a lot that was carved off by someone in the past. It's not part of the Shore Acre subdivision. There's no, we could not find any evidence of any buried lots of record in that lot. So the Ham lot, even with the Nichols addition, is less than four acres in size. And because this is an 80,000 square foot zone, you can't divide it and make it an undersized lot. So as long as it's under 160,000 square feet, it can't be divided. And it is under 160,000 square feet. Okay. And no grandfather lot there. Thanks. Okay. That's the point I was trying to clarify. Okay. So thank you. Lane. I guess the note you're referring to, I just want to make sure we're all looking at the same note, is note number nine on the plan. Is that what you're concerned about? No, not actually. It was the note that I wasn't was exactly sure what this note, but it's been clarified, so I don't have any more questions. But, I will look at one but there are no um, acreages on this plan. Where is it where you were talking about acreage calculations? I said, okay. That's simply the applicant submission, right? Right, as part of uh, materials submit. But, okay, it seems, to, but that is picked up again on, on the actual plan that we're being asked to approve. Sheet two? On sheet two, I think it is, right, on note nine. I'm actually less concerned about what the applicant asserts in this than the language as it appears on sheet two, um, which says no more than four lots can be served by the proposed private road without returning to the planning board. Um, because it seems to me, I'm not sure what the word served means, but if we're talking about use rights, that's really nothing for us to opine on one way or another. The word serve to me seems to mean legal right of access. And we have no place saying anything about how many lots have a legal right of access. But what we can say is that there is a maximum number of residents that can use this road for their primary access without returning to the planning board. And I don't think that number is four. I don't, uh, I, and I guess this is where I would have questions for the fire chief. I don't think we should be saying that this road, unless we're going to go to the 22 feet width, I don't think we can say that four lots can use this road as their access without coming back. They, they may have a legal right to the road, but that's a different question than whether the road can be developed as a 14 foot wide road and four residences can be served by it. So I would clarify, I would rewrite this note entirely after we hear from the fire chief okay. in terms of how many residences can use this road as a primary means of access as a matter of safety. And the other question I have is whether the, there is a sprinkler in the Ham's house 
because if not, we already have more than one residence that would be served by this road, and they wouldn't both have sprinklers unless, and, and we have no authority to require that the hams get sprinklers. Correct. So I, I guess now I would want to hear from the fire chief in terms of how many properties can safely be served off of a 14-foot wide right-of-way. There are two feet of gravel on either side, but as the town engineer observed, the gravel part, the grass part, is not plowed. So for all intents and purposes, it is a 14-foot wide way that would be there for the fire truck. So I would want to know what the safety situation is, because we've heard a variety of things here. When John and I have had a conversation, obviously, about this road, and one of the things that I said in my notes to Maureen, I believe you have them, is one lot, the 14, I don't, first of all, the 14-foot road, I don't, I'm not a fan of, but there are other, it's not mine to address on the, on the shielding from the Ham's house and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, I like the wider road if I can have it. But what I said is if that one lot, I could live with one house being served by the 14-foot road, if it had sprinklers. If we go to more, then I'd want to be able to have that road wide to 22 feet. Uh, because of the distance, the closest hydrant is by Overlook Lane. If we have to go more than 1,000 feet, we need to get two trucks in there. If the first truck is laid down, hosed, there's, on a 14-foot ride road, there's not enough room for the second truck to get by it. And sprinklers are designed to contain a fire, not necessarily put it out. So that what I'm looking for in a sprinkler is to buy us some time to get that operation set up. And you're right, a 14-foot wide road is a difficult road and it's a challenging road for us. And that's 14 feet at best. If there's snow, is someone going to keep it to the 14 feet? And the 22 feet gives me room to pass trucks. The 14 feet does not. So that's why, you know, I'm trying to be as understanding as I can to the other needs in this whole question, but I have a rather narrow focus. I want to give myself the best odds of a successful outcome. And that's why I prefer the wider roads. Okay. Can I have a question? Um, Can you sit, put your microphone down? Yeah. Please? So in terms of what El Elaine was starting to get at, we do have this existing house that is not sprinklered. Um, how, how would you handle that? I mean, That's readily it, accessible from that the road. That's, that's not, that's, so you would you're not, you're not 100 feet off the road with that. I mean, that's, that's not the same issue if we get 800 or 1,000 feet off up that road. It, it's right, it's close proximity to the existing road. So essentially, though, what you're saying is if any house besides the one on that back lot gets built that's served by that road, you would want to see a wider road? I'd want to see a wider road, or period, not. period, to be honest with you. My preference is for the wider road. But having said that, that there are other factors in play here that if, we, if you do decide to go to a narrower road, then the sprinklers will give me time to get our operation in it and make changes based on what conditions we find when we get there. But it seems that what they're proposing is potentially three sprinkler houses at the end of this road. Is that? And, and, I, and I did say in my note to Maureen that if we go to more, more than one house, I'd want to be able to go to the 22-foot wide road. Liza? Do you have any opinion about paving the 14-foot, you know, the proposed 14 feet plus the two feet on each side? So gaining another four feet. Yeah, I believe, like I mentioned it earlier, if, if you have gravel edges with grass, they're not going to get plowed. Uh, nobody's, nobody wants to plow that. So now I'm down to a 14-foot road. I mean, the wider the road, the better off I am. But, you know, we have 10-foot wide trucks. So whether the road's 14 feet or 18 feet, I still can't pass them. So. Gotcha. Maureen started out by saying that the town staff is very reluctant to approve waivers to road width. And it seems to me that we're approving a waiver to the road width to save three trees that provide access, that provide some shielding for the hams. And to me, that's not sufficient reason to waive a town standard. Well, I don't know if that's the only reason. I mean, part of it is also, you know, Every time you make a wide street, you get the sense that 
your neighborhood has a lot of paving in it. Then and we should amend I the ordinance to say that, that you don't require 20 right, foot. But to me, we're sort of amending our ordinance lot by lot, and I think that's inappropriate. I think we have to have a significant reason that's unique to this property. And it seems to me that the hams have plenty room on their lot to plant new oak trees if they really need screening, and they're going to have a fence. If we think our road ordinance is wrong, that we should not require 22-foot roads, then the way to fix that is by proposing an amendment to the ordinance. Nobody's done that. We have not haven't been asked to do that. We haven't discussed it. And I think to sort of essentially do that lot by lot is not appropriate. I may not, I may be in the minority here, but. Henry, in line. I just have a quick question. Where is the nearest uh, water main to this, to this lot? Hydrant, I believe, is Overlook is the closest one. So how far is that from this road? From this proposed road, uh, it's it's not very far. There is, yeah. I'm sorry, there's 385 hydrants. I can't remember where they all are, but I know there's, there's a couple on in the area. But, yeah. So that's not a major problem then. Yes, sir. The further we get from that hydrant, it becomes the bigger problem. Well, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm. We can only go a thousand, We can only go a thousand feet before we need another truck. In the so, line. if you went to the end of this road from a hydrant, is that in excess of a thousand feet? I couldn't answer that without looking. Like a, at it. If you go to the turn round, and then you've got to lay, you've got to lay. Two hundred twenty-five feet. I, I would think we were within a thousand feet. Within a thousand. Liza. Um. I'm sympathetic to um, Joe's argument of minimizing the pavement, but yours and safety. And it sounds like running, running a lot of hose up this private road, this proposed access way, is the issue for having two trucks. Yeah, depending um, on how far uh, the house is. So I'm wondering um, if another hydrant was placed at the end of Old Hayfield Road. I'd have, I, I'm not, to, I'd have to go see what size main that is uh -huh. that goes down Reef Road. Because if you're going for, if it's an eight-inch main, it's an, an eight-inch. The, it, you know, that's that's marginal. It, it's not as big as we would like them. We prefer the tens, but so you, I mean, you'd end up with an eight-inch. It would be better than what we have now, which is no hydrant up there. So, but I, you know. Do we? And we don't know. Do we know, John, how big the main is? That's eight inch. It's, oh, it is eight inches. Yeah. Okay, so that's not an option. It could be. I mean, there's a lot of options, and I'm sensitive to the needs of everyone, but again, you know, I'm, I just want to answer to the narrow focus that I have. I want to give myself the best opportunity, and I don't want to, you know, the other questions are not mine to answer, I don't believe. Um, if this was a private access way, if we weren't looking at a, a road, uh, if we were looking at a private access, access way, it would be the same, tra the, the travel width would be 14 paved, and there would be two shoulders, two feet wide, which is what is actually proposed. If this was an access way, a driveway in a sense, would you also then request, because we're not, the, the applicant wouldn't be asking for a waiver. Let's say we were building a long driveway. Mm -hmm. Would you also have the same concerns that that house be sprinkled? Yes, and, and the turnarounds. I mean, all, whether it's a private driveway or a, a road, I had the same concerns. I mean, okay, mm -hmm. and so if there's another house, you know what the Priors lot is? Are you familiar with this, the diagram? If the Priors ever were able to, wanted to build a house, and they would probably, you'd feel more comfortable Let's say the Boggs weren't building their private access. Let's say the priors are in front of us. Would you want them to be sprinkled, have sprinklers? Would you feel more comfortable getting in there fighting a if fire? If they were asking for the same narrow road width, yes. So it's more uh, the distance of having to bring the hose. It's not so much um, you're worried about traffic on this road no. or somebody parking a car on this road that make it even the travel lane less. No, no, that's always going to be a concern. But the, the, the whole idea behind sprinklers is to gain us time. And sprinklers will, for the most part, if it's a small fire, they will contain it. Sometimes they will put it out. But the whole premise is that they will give us time mm -hmm. to get it. I'm almost looking at this as um, we are, in a sense, building a private access way. 
to get to the bogs lot. And you're saying that you would even then want sprinklers, I believe I just heard. So we're actually now saying we're going to build it a long driveway, we're going to call it a private road, and perhaps if the Boggs wanted to put two homes, the Priors wanted to put one or two, you know, we're using a long driveway to access these additional lots. But as far as fire safety would go, I believe I'm still hearing it's not so much getting to these lots, you would still have the problem if we made it a private access way to the priors, we made it a private access way to the bogs, and there was just one house. The problem is the length of the hose going up, the time necessary to maybe get two vehicles to a home instead of, you know, you can probably get that one up there, but if you needed to get a second. So I'm just wondering if we do build it to this standard of a private access way, in a sense a long driveway, but we allow other homes to potentially, perhaps, be built that having sprinklers in all of these, perhaps, potential homes would help alleviate some of the concerns you have about if this driveway is not long enough to me, for me to get back to the bogs is a uh, lot, at least we got the sprinklers and then we'll try. So well, the whole sprinkler thing came out of the discussion of it going to be being a 14-foot wide road. And so knowing that that can restrict our operations, I'm looking for the sprinklers to buy me the time to get ourselves set up. Again, my preference is for the wider road, but I understand you have other concerns to address. And I just want to keep everybody that I have a narrow focus on the width of the road. I like a wide road for all sorts of reasons. But, you know, sprinklers, Again, if any time we can have sprinklers, it, it works to our advantage, it works to the homeowner's advantage. But the initial reason for the sprinklers was it was a 14, they were proposing a 14 foot wide road. And so then I want to make sure that I have, again, it, it works in my favor. But just to reiterate, you're okay with a 14 foot wide road accessing a single sprinklered house, but you don't like a 14 foot wide road accessing any more than one sprinkled house. That's when one is the threshold. After that, you want... Because the more houses, the more opportunity for traffic. You talk about parked cars, you talk okay. about other things going on. So my question, is it possible to have some provision that if more than one house was built that used this roadway, that that would kick in a, uh, the requirement that the road be widened to 22 feet? let it be built at 14 initially? That's something for the board to consider. Maureen, did you want to add to that? Yeah, you can do that. Um, our success with that hasn't been so great, but yeah, you certainly can put that in as a note. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me, uh, Chief, and I may have misunderstood what you said before. One house on the blogs, parcel, sprinkled, well, I won't give. Crazy about the No, when when originally, you know, obviously my preference is for the widest road, for the 22 foot wide road. In the interest of all the other factors that were going in there, the option is out there to do this other thing. But the, if I could have what the 22 foot wide road, that would be the best option for me. But again, I have a narrow focus on that. I just want to make be clear on that. One house, two houses, three houses, four houses. Any, one house on, on a 14 foot wide drive, I consider that a driveway, is a challenge for us. And we have a lot of those challenges out already in this town. So, I, I'm, so the additional houses just compound your. Well, there's more, there's more opportunity for traffic and things. Is, is this controversy existing over four trees? Is that what has us wondering about? Yes. That? Yes. Well, I would think it, I would expand on that a little bit um, and, and say uh, Joe brought some points up. Um, I, I know in the past we have done this. We have um, old C point point was 12 paved and two three foot wide, and there were four houses on that. And when the applicant came before us, they submitted. Um, they also submitted some paperwork, and I was reading about the road width because they asked for a waiver, which we ended up granting. And it said, <clears throat> the plans propose a private gravel road with a width of 18 feet with two foot grass shoulders on either side, a reduction from 22 feet width. 
The existing gravel road will range from 11 to 15 feet and it serves three residents and the reduction is a request to minimize environmental disturbances, avoid a greenbelt easement, to maintain the low volume of vehicle presence and the scenic character of the neighborhood. So possibly those last, that last sentence might be also what we are trying to do other than just preserve, when we say just preserve or three or four trees. I think that's the. Those were existing region. houses, though, were they not? Uh, no, this was. Some, um, several of them were. Actually, I read to you Golden Ridge. Sorry, I read to you Golden Ridge, and I, there I, were I thought it was mostly existing houses. To but uh, no, on Golden you Ridge. Three new lots to that. So I read you Golden Ridge. My, I was looking at also Old Sea Point, um, which we did. Old Sea Point was 12 paved, paved, and Golden Ridge was 18 gravel. Just to give an idea of what we've done in the past, but I understand those were waivers, and I understand what you're saying, Elaine. You the more we do it, the more it seems to me that we're, we're amending a statute in a way that we shouldn't, and we should not be, we should not just routinely be doing it. And it's, you know, it's all. I can't imagine a neighborhood that would not rather have narrower rather than wider roads because they think it looks aesthetically preferable. Until there's that's a fire. always going to be, until there's a fire, that's always going to be the preference. And whoever has to pave the cost for building the road is always going to want to build a narrower road. I think those, those factors are not ever unique. That's the universal. If those are the factors we want to address, we need to address those by amending the statute. To me, we do waivers in something that's unique to this property, and we may not have always done that, but we, I think we should. And I, I just don't see the overwhelming need here, and what we're, what we're talking about is a new development, a new road, potentially in the back there, and you know, we allow one house, and then the next person's going to come to the planning board and say, oh, I want to build a second house. And, they're going to moan and groan and say, gee, just to build one more house, you're going to make me redo this whole road and repave it just for one more house? And we're going to say, oh, gee, that's, so, that's way too expensive for you, poor homeowner, and we won't approve it. And then sort of piecemeal one at a time, it's very difficult. And I think we need to start out. This is a new road that's being created. We're calling it a road, not a private access way. And I think we should we should respect our town statutes and require that they be complied with. It was one, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I had a question for the chief. And um, I, as I recall, there was a fire at the end of Old Sea Point Road. Yes. Um, and it was, so can you tell us about the fire and was the, were there problems accessing the house? It's, it's challenging because it's, it's yeah. a narrow road. And, and that's, again, why we speak to you know, we were fortunate it was summertime and not winter when we could get off the road and get around. But we ended up with everything stacked up enough. You know, it, it just, it, it's not enough room for what we had to do, but we managed to do it. But there's challenges all through town. It's not unique to that road. Okay, gotcha. I remember it was pretty damaging. So I, yeah. had the road been wider, had, would you have been able to put the fire out faster? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Those are hypotheticals. Gotcha. Are. But I get that it was in the summer and that in the winter it would be really good. Yeah, the winter obviously now is our options. If there's snow. Mm -hmm. Henry. Yes, looking at this map, if you put, assuming you put the road where it's proposed at the end, and somehow or other the rest of this lot gets developed, you, you could possibly end up with a dwelling quite some considerable way away, accessed by a 14 foot road, and then you've got to somehow or other make your way down this other area here. You're going to have either a lot of trucks in the way getting the water. I mean, it just doesn't seem feasible. Unless you don't build at the end of that, no. and in which case, why is there three or four possible lots coming out? Yeah, if, if there is any more than one lot on the four and a half acre parcel, the applicant, whoever it is, is going to have to come back before the planning board because it's not enough frontage for two lots. There's only enough frontage on the bar property for a single lot. When you say frontage, frontage to what? Road frontage. You're saying the road frontage is purely from, from this new road that you're going to build. That's the frontage. That represents the frontage. This, this turnaround represents the required frontage for a single lot. 
on the bog's property. Right. If they, or if anyone, wanted to build an additional lot on the bog's property, this road would have to be extended in order to create that frontage. Yes, but still, the Elizabeth Road or whatever you're calling it is still 14 feet. You'd have to extend it. No, no, no. They'd have to come back to the planning board and they'd be required to build it to 22 feet wide. And I recall last time there was no actual re requirement to actually build it. It was just going to be a possible thing to ensure that this is a buildable lot in the future. Correct. That's, that's the only thing no that... plans to actually implement this. That's framework. correct. So, just to clarify, you wouldn't be taking the trees out right away? Not until the road is, is, build is constructed. Um, I just want to say, you know, I, ho I hope there's a compromise here somewhere. Because, I mean, these aren't just three or four trees. These are mature oak trees. They're significant. And, you know, I, I like what Joe, Joe's proposal is. Um, if there is any more than one home, one additional home built on the Boggs property, this includes the, the prior lot, that they would be required to come back to the planning board, or you can put a condition on the plan that the road would be required to be widened to 22 feet wide. Yes, Maureen. Has, ha, would the applicant be willing to not put the loam and seed over the two foot wide gravel? Yeah, yeah I was, I was going to suggest that. If that were the case, then we can make sure the maintenance agreement requires you to plow the full 18 right. feet of gravel as opposed to exactly. 14 feet. Exactly. Um, if the chief is comfortable with this, what we would propose is rather than two foot wide grass shoulders, we would make two foot wide gravel shoulders. So there'd be 14 feet wide of pavement plus the uh, two feet of gravel shoulders rather than grass. And is that? Uh, it's still a waiver? It, well, yeah, it, it is a waiver. But it, uh, there has to be some strong language in there that makes sure that it's plowed to that width. Because again, I'm not sure that, you know, if, it, if it's gravel, can it, can it be plowed adequately? I, again, I'm looking to give myself as many advantages as I can. I'm not trying to make it hard for, I know the reason we talked about the sprinklers and the narrow road was, you know, to try to accommodate that, but I, if we talk, start talking multiple dwellings down there, I'm just not a fan of that narrow road. Do you think you need 20 feet, though, 20 feet plus to get I need, I need about 20 feet. So that but 18 feet, if, you know, the tires will still be on the pavement, it's the mirrors and stuff that you need to get by the truck, by each truck. But 18, 14 plus. Yeah, I, again, I, you know, I want to stick with the premise that I'm a big fan of the 22-foot road. If we can, and it's up to you if you want to strike a compromise, but you know, I, I just, the 18-foot is better than 14 feet, and obviously 22 is better than 18. So. But if, you, if your truck's 10 feet wide, and you've got two trucks, you need 20 feet regardless of what's under them. It's 10, it's 10 feet at the mirrors, so... Is so you tire, still need the tires are inside feet. the mirrors. So. You need 20 feet to move one truck past another, yeah. unless you collapse the mirror. Uh, Lisa, I have a question for that. Um, have the priors been very involved in this? Because it seems like um, by moving the center line of the road five foot off center, you know, not only are you saving these oak trees, but now the road, I think it's five feet closer to the prior's house. And, um, and they also have an interest because of these lots they may want to uh, develop in the future. Um, I'm just curious, I don't know, have you, have you heard back from them? Yes, Stefan Meta, Five Over Oak Lane. Um, yes, so I've spoken with Mr. Pryor, George Pryor, who speaks on the behalf of his wife, who I think is the trustee of, of the of the uh, trust that owns the um, those lots, and he's he's fully aware. So um, it, it might be helpful just to remind uh, uh, the board that the motivation for us has always been really to preserve buildability, buildability of our back lot, and um, 
this is therefore theoretical for us ever to to build the the road. We are being deferential to the priors primarily in making this a proposal request for a roadway rather than an access because they have those grandfathered lots. Um, and they know that we have changed our plans from an access way to a roadway to accommodate the potential rights uh, for um, developing those two grandfathered lots. Um, yes, so they are, are fully aware. But um, you said you changed your proposal to a roadway, but you're proposing to build a, a roadway to the access way standards. Is that right? Yes. Okay. okay thank you. And, and that is really to respect the Hams property. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. So um, I don't know if you had the chance to do a site visit, but it's very tight in there. And, and a larger paved way would have significant impact yeah. on, on the hams. But my thought is, to your point, is that if you're proposing a roadway um, out of respect for the priors, but we've got this issue with access way, only one house can be built, it's, um, it's not doing the priors any favors in a practical sense because they would still have to come before the planning board and widen the road. Yes, but we're not here to argue on the Ham's behalf, or the, the Prior's behalf, really just to give them the possibility if they want to develop it. Thanks. Sure. Any further comments? Lane? Is it correct, Maureen, that, they, that this could not come in as a private access way since the road already serves the Ham's property? No, it's, it's not correct because you could, you could convert to a private access way as soon as it passes the Hams driveway. So it seems to me that perhaps that's what we ought to do because then what we're building is a private access way. So it's what we're, what we're being asked to approve is a private access way. So if we call it a private access way, then it seems to me we solve our problem and we're, and we're respecting the private access way standards and anyone who wanted to come in and build another lot, it's very clear that they would need a different approval because they would have to convert that private access way to a roadway. Right. And, and, you know, everything you said is absolutely true. And to be fair, I recommended to the applicant that they come in with a road instead of a private access way because I was looking to the future, I was looking to the full potential for this access way to be used. And I came up with no more than two lots on the bog lot and one lot behind the priors. In fact, it's two lots on the priors. So for that reason, I recommended that they go with a private road. The other reason I recommended that is based on the past history of the planning board. You have multiple times waived the road standards and it was my expectation that you would continue on that path. Certainly, if you have decided to break out in a new direction, the applicants may want to consider coming forward and at this moment changing their application to a private access way standard application. With that said, what you've done in the past is once the road's there, then you've been willing to grant waivers. So. I think I, I guess as a board, it, they need some direction. I'd like to respond to that. Yeah. If, if our town staff is telling citizens that we routinely waive our statutory requirements, I find that very troubling. Because waivers are not supposed to be routine. But I to think, be fair, and to respond. Oh, and that may be what we've done, but Arlington that's what Lane, we routinely, if Beckles that is Lane, what routinely happens, Old Sea Point Road. we should amend the statute. You, it was amended. It was amended to make the road width wider. And unt yes, and I've watched this whole thing unfold. It's been painful. You had a 20-foot wide road standard, and it was a standard you applied to local roads, both public and private. And when waivers were requested, you denied them. And then when the standard went up to a 22-foot wide local road, the very first time you were asked for a waiver, you waived it down to 18 feet for Arlington Lane. And then there was a waiver for Becky's Lane and there was a waiver for Old Sea Point Road, and there was a waiver for Golden Ridge Lane. So 
when applicants ask me what direction they take, I look at the past practice of the board in directing them. And, and one other thing, on, I don't have the, the language in front, I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but I believe there's some language in the waiver section that talks about waivers are warranted when it has to do with preservation of environmental or vegetation or natural features. Yes, Liza. Not to belabor this. But speaking of that, so um, just from using my pen as a measurement stick, it looks like these um, trees are closer than 14 feet together, the, the centers of these oak trees. And they look to me like they were really close together from the photo. And, and um, I'm not an arborist, but it seems to me that they're too close together for huge trees. So I'm not sure. It seems to me like they need to be thin. That middle one needs no, to come no. out if they're really going to thrive. Absolutely dry. not. Um, but they look kind of scraggly to me no, but from the photo, <laughs> I have to say. And I can totally Liza appreciate did. that in the summer, not that scrag... shielding would be great. They're, they're magnificent they oak trees. In from the there. photo. Yeah. We should no. have had, I wish we had had a sidewalk. They're magnificent oak yeah. trees. And they're not straggly. They're, they're not too close together. They've grown like this ever since they were planted or naturally grown. They're, they're magnificent oak trees, and I would hate to come up with a plan yeah. that requires I just know from planting trees in my own yard that 14 feet's pretty close together for, yeah. you know, a big tree species. Right. So, but we, that really, I think we should have had a site walk because it's hard for me to evaluate the value of those trees without having seen them. Um, but you, you don't think they're too close together? No, I don't. Maureen, were you able to find that language? Yes, it's the uh, end of the subdivision ordinance, section 16-3-5 waivers. Where the planning board finds that undue hardship, practical difficulties, or restriction upon imaginative and otherwise desirable design may result from strict compliance with this ordinance, it may waive one or more of the requirements of this ordinance in favor of a proposed alternative upon a showing that, as compared with strict compliance, such alternative one will not create more hazardous traffic conditions or less sanitary sewage disposal conditions than strict compliance. Two, will provide more varied and imaginative subdivision layout and design. Three, will serve substantially the standards of road design and construction required by this chapter and the zoning ordinance. And four, will not have the effect of nullifying the intent and objectives of the comprehensive plan or this ordinance, provided that in granting such waiver, the planning board may impose such conditions as they deem necessary to secure the foregoing objectives. Nothing about uh, fire and hazard. No, it's, I think it does. It says, will not create more hazardous traffic conditions or less sanitary disposal conditions and strict compliance. It has varied and imaginative subdivision design, substantially the standards of road design and construction required. I think that if you felt that, that a waiver would hamper fire protection, you could deny the waiver. Yes. Uh, I, I thought Elaine had an ingenious proposal, although I have a little trouble. It sounds a little bit incongruous taking a paper street, which is essentially a public way, at least with respect to the parcels in the subdivision, and creating on it what you would call a private driveway. But <coughs> at the same time, if we take your proposal and have a, um, a street, if you will, but limited for the purposes of the waiver to serving only one resident sprinkler at the end. With that, Joe, that, is that basically what you were saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the, how the street would be the, the 14 foot width. Yeah, 14 foot to, to, but only, to, only so long as there's only one parcel, one dwelling on the bogs parcel. Right. So if the priors want to add properties, too bad. If the hams want to put property, uh, build on the back of their property, too bad. Would it? But if the priors want property, all they have to do is just allow a little bulge around the trees and they save the trees and still have your width of the, of the road. Well, I mean, it does encroach on their property a bit, but... They'd have to do a compliant road. My suggestion was to this, this put in Hold on, guys. What is Joe speaking? Morehouse and Hill. 
Oh, yeah. The, well, they'd have to funky. cut that out. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Joe, because otherwise Joe has the floor. Guys. Yeah, well, who does that burden fall if you do that? I mean, okay, I missed some of the conversation. Oh. Joe, go ahead. Oh, oh, I just clarified that my proposal was that there's a provision that the street be widened if additional houses are built. And Pete asked, who would that burden fall upon? And I didn't get that far. I suppose on anybody right. who proposed to add more, more dwellings. But that's the only way that you could possibly deliver what they're asking for and reasonably keep Chief, Chief uh, Gleason happy, right? I have to ask one other question. Henry. Assuming that you were to build, assuming you were to build something on this, this lot, you still got things like electricity and sewerage to bring up. Would you bring that under the existing road? Would that be how you would do it? Yeah, I mean, once the real road was built and you wanted to build something over here, you still got sewerage and electricity and water to bring up there. So you would build that under the road, take yeah, the road it, up, and those are all those are all designed on the plans. We'd bring water, electric, telephone, and cable. Sanitary sewer would be on-site disposal. And that wouldn't destroy the trees doing that. No. You'd be able to build it on the other side of the road, I yes. assume. Thank you. So if you were to take my suggestion, you would have to take a wider road into account when laying out your utilities? For future? For future, right. Yes. Okay. OK. I'm trying to now find out what all our options are so that then we can just Try to narrow it down, maybe get to one option. Um, I'm just going to throw this out, not that anyone's for or against, but one option is the applicant now proposes this be a private access way, and it serves one lot back on their, the box's property. It would not, though, if it is a private access way, it would be 14 feet wide paved. Is that correct, Maureen? Is I well, I think the applicant has some flexibility. I mean, right? I you could, without very, with very little change to the applicant's proposal, mm -hmm. have 14 foot wide paved, two foot wide gravel shoulders, just strip off the loam and seed. You Still could also say, so that'd be paving, 18. Yeah, if you're paving more than 14, you've mm -hmm. got to have enough gravel shoulder to, to stabilize the pavement. Okay. That's why if, if you're going to pave more than 14, you need at least, I would think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to channel the public works director. So um, can I just ask a basic question about that? If you, you can build a private access way on a paper street. We have approved that several times because if you, I mean, un, under the shifting paper street law, there are rights not just that the town has in theory, but also rights that individual property owners have. So if multiple people have access to the same area of paper street, one person can go in and cut down all the trees to make it more accessible. Someone else could go in and put in gravel. Someone else could go in and actually pave it. What you can't do is do things that abridge the other people's rights. And if their rights are, are rights of access and all you're doing is paving it, you're not abridging their rights and in, in you're actually enhancing their access rights. So the Katahdin Road, which is a road that's in this exact same neighborhood, the planning board had previously granted a private access way permit to build in a paper street where it was clear that there were future, there were additional lots up the road from where the, the private access way uh, was approved. And the, uh, the concept was that as those additional lots were were built upon, they would be able to use the road that had already been built as a private access way. So that first option, private access way, um, 14 then, foot paved, two would, foot wide gravel shoulders. It still would not be 20 though. That only comes up to 18. So that still doesn't, so the con would be, it still does not reach what you're looking for. The pro would be, we are not really giving any waivers it still uh, saves the trees, I believe. So it gives the buffering saves the hams trees. are looking for. We Another con would be the priors, if they ever decided to build, they, this is a private access way, they would have to come back. Correct. 
So those are the pros and cons on you the nut. You would still require the sprinkler at the house. Okay, yes, we would still require a sprinkler per the fire chief's recommendation. There were, there were two other waivers that we requested that we'd like to continue to request, and that is mm -hmm. the five-foot offset, mm -hmm. which will help provide separation between the road and the trees. And it, there was, do you remember the grade waiver that we are requesting at the beginning? Yes. We still want to continue those uh, okay. requests. I've captured that as option one. Option two then would be we build this to a uh, private road standard. Then the travel way would be a 22 foot. Pro would be that that would satisfy the fire chief. Con would be all these it would be that the hams, we would lose the oak trees for the hams. Um, it would be 22 feet of paved area in, in what is otherwise right now. Um, looks like that, so very overgrown. Um, and then the priors, the pro for the priors is they could potentially, possibly someday just have a, a, you know, a driveway cut right into that road. Mm. So that's another one. Um, I'm looking for a third option. Does anyone have a third option on this? I was trying to write these down, but I'm missing some of it. Anyone have a suggestion, or, or we're going to have? Well, the to third, the third option yes. would be the compromise, that, as outlined by Joe. And that would be. Let me just. <laughs> I think that's number one. Was it number one? Yeah. Yeah. Number one. No. Uh, the, no. Number the, one was the private access way. Period. With, yeah. with the house sprinkled and mine was Joe's be, was uh, put in a provision that the it would be a, a private roadway and it would be widened to the 22 feet if any additional houses if more than one house were to be served by the road. That's pretty well given, isn't it? Though? There's, there's not enough access way at the end of the of the T junction in. Not, not just on that lot, but the prior slot. If it was a private road, what would the standard be that it's being built to? What the applicant is proposing right now? We're going to call it, so it would be what they're proposing. It would be 14 feet Right, wide in other words, the waiver travel. would be granted as long as it's only serving one house. Then isn't it, in a sense, a private access way? Because that only serves one. Yes, you know, yeah. Yes. I would prefer having it a private access way, just, you know, all things being equal, because I think um, it's important for further development for that um, precedent not to be there, that the plan, an earlier planning board granted a waiver to a private road width standard. Okay. And I think there might be then, you know, um, more inertia to overcome. Okay, so a private right access now, you, way. Which yes, is, Henry. Memory. is a private access way limited to one house, or can you have two houses off a of private access? Way? No, once you go to two, it has to be a private road. Right, okay. All right, then that needs to. So Elaine? it would have to be a private road to up to the beginning of the prior's driveway. So that to the, first to the part hand of lot. It would yeah. be compliant with private road standards, mm -hmm. and then it would narrow as it went on back, but it would be narrowing before it got to the trees. Yes. Actually, I, I take it back. There is a slight difference in okay. my proposal because if we have him lay this out so that it could be turned into a private road, it is slightly different than if the layout is exactly as it is now. In other words, the utilities would have to be taken into account. Um, I mean, you wouldn't need a full-blown design for the future 22-foot road, but the design would have to take that into account. Okay. Would we have to have the private road standard apply up to the Hams driveway and then convert it from there? So this is a really a two-part application for X number of feet as a private road and then Y number of feet as a private road. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how would the engineering, I, I don't, follow all the engineering about um, if it's built to a private access way standards, which this appears to be, but please clarify that for me. Is this built to a private road and the width is just private access way standards? 
I, I didn't follow what you were saying. Oh, well, I guess I'm just, is, is this idea. design capable of being widened or is the, are the utilities too close? Where are the utilities running in relation to the road? Um, and you have grading there. Well, these are these are just the, the grading. This is, the, this is 50, 57, so it's shaped around. So on sheet three, John, yeah. where you're showing the utilities yeah. hard to the left of that road, right. so your only choice. Well, you have your water under the road. Yeah, they, they wouldn't. I just looked at it. We have the water on the right hand side, the underground electric on the left hand side. Um, there is no public sewer here, so it's all on-site disposal. Um, there would not be an issue in, at some point, widening this road to private road standards. It wouldn't have an impact on the utilities. Um, you know, Stefan just uh, mentioned one, one thing that I think we need to discuss here, is that if we decide to go with a private access way rather than a private road, um, we want to make sure that this private access way is for the Boggs property because we don't want to lose our right to potentially uh, build a home back there. Um, that, that's the way a private access way would be structured. It's, okay. it's lot specific. Okay, it's a lot specific. Yes. Yes. Liza. Um, yeah. I guess one one um, thing that I think is important for planning purposes is if this becomes a private road and it um, indeed is 22 feet wide, say two homes are built. I think that um, given that those oak trees would then come out anyway, that um, this road be centered in the right of way. Be what, sorry? This road be centered in the right of way. I think that's fair to homeowners on both sides. And I don't know if that's something that we can direct for future development. But if it does go from, you know, 18 to 22, the growth should be, you know, on the right as we look at this. But would that um, be a matter? Would that be a matter for the future planning board if this was ever brought up? Or you could put it in a note. You could, you, I mean, if you're, it seems like you're moving in the direction of, a private access way with a note that if it's going to be uh, provide access to more, you have to come back to the planning board. You have to build a private road. It has to be 22 feet wide, and the road you're building has to be centered in the right of way. You could add that to the note. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I I, I don't see why it has to be centered like that. Though to be honest with it. Okay. That's just my. Yeah. You know, it's going to be built that way, and it, everybody's acceptable who owns property around it to it, increase the size for that for whatever well, reason. Liza was saying if the road became widened, that it would be centered. You think it should be centered? If if it became wider. Yeah, just Liza's argument. I thought was good. That in each side shares. Um, but I want to continue. Uh, are we looking at a option of making a private access way with some of the other um, conditions? Or do we want to still look at um, allowing um, something else to be there? Are, are we moving towards the access way or are we not? Caroline, we haven't heard from you. Do you want to? Everybody keeps asking my questions, so I just sit here and. <laughs> <laughs> I was raising my hand, and then Peter asked my question, so I was all set. <laughs> Do you feel one way or the other to jump in on this? Um, or? I am inclined, if this were is going to be a private road, to build it to standard. That okay. would be my inclination. So, in order to give them private access way, call it call a spade a spade. If it's a private access way, call it a private access way. Mm -hmm. Elaine, have we captured I would agree with of the waivers? Henry? I guess I'll go along with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Joe, what are your thoughts about which direction we're, we uh, want to take? Private access way. Yeah. Also, 
Okay. Thing. All right. Well, then, at this point, we will be looking at a private access way, and we would be looking at um, my notes now. With the t on either side, two feet of gravel shoulder. Right. Okay. Now um, it's a private access way. Thoughts on the sprinkler? I don't know if that is normally in our plans, but we've heard from the fire chief that he would like it. Any thoughts on the sprinkler? Yes. I Can I ask a question? Yes, that. Carolyn. If this goes to a private access way, we are not granting a waiver, and as a result of not granting a waiver, do we have the authority to request sprinkler? I was just checking um, the traveled way because the 14 and the 18 gets used interchangeably. And under the private access way standards, it says the traveled way shall be constructed with a minimum of three inches of crushed gravel having a width of at least 14 feet. The remaining width of the gravel base may be loamed and seeded. So the standard for a private access way is 14 feet of traveled way, which can be paved or gravel, and then uh, two feet gravel shoulder on either side which can be loamed and seeded. So what we were saying, you could, however, you are still shifting it five feet off the center line, so I guess you so could are creating use that okay. as your hook. All right. Are we required to approve a private access way? Isn't that something that requires, are there other standards that take into account length of the road? And fire safety. Not length of the road. The lot approved under this provision shall be improved with only one dwelling um, that has to have a, a right of way width, a minimum width of 30 feet. Um, there has to be sub base gravel of 15 inches, and it's a, t a type D gravel with uh, a width of 18 feet, and then another three inches of gravel um, within 10 feet of the edge of the paving. Um, it, of the edge of the access way from the town road it has to be paved for the first 50 feet. There has to be gutter drainage. There has to be a turnaround. Uh, there has to be adequate sight distance. And um, it also says under the private access way standards that the planning board may reduce the requirements of subsections B1, 2, and 3, um, which includes all the standards for width. Uh, to a lesser standard where there is an existing private access or to promote better neighborhood development. But in no case shall standards be reduced so that access for any emergency vehicle is prohibited. Okay. So I don't believe we're looking to reduce this private access way. So the question once again will be then sprinklers. It's not a requirement. Would, what, how does the board feel given the testimony from the fire chief about requiring sprinklers? I like to give the fire chief everything he asks for. <laughs> That's a yes to sprinklers. I'm s Elaine agrees. Henry, one more, and Fine. Carol Ann. Then we were. Are you on board for that? Sure. Okay. Then that makes four for the sprinklers. So yeah, the sprinklers only authority of, of moving the center line. Of the no, I, I don't believe the, I was. That's the only hook you've got. Yeah, we have oh. hook to require sprinkler. Are we no longer in the sub? What, no, the, it, yeah. the private yeah. access way standards come out of the zoning ordinance. Okay. So you've left. Can this. we do this, or does the applicant have to come back with a new application? I'm guessing the applicant would be much more comfortable with a conditional approval that requires him to make these changes to the plans. So, yes, you can approve it tonight conditionally to plans being changed as you dictate. Even though this isn't what the application, it's been filed as a... No, it hasn't been. Ordinance ...and now it's filed under, we're granting something under the zoning ordinance? Yep. You... There hasn't been any public notice that this was an op a possibility of what would happen? It is a lesser approval than what was noticed. So that's okay. I think it is. 
Now, if the applicant wanted to say, I don't want a private access way, I want a private road approval, then um, you may want to ask the applicant to come back and make changes. And actually, Elaine, if it makes you feel be better, when I was going over the agenda, I noticed that um, it originally said under section 19-7-9B, private road public hearing. I believe this is section 19 dash Yes, and, and that's a good point because it, no, it's the, on the agenda. The, your requirement for road access comes under the zoning ordinance. But if you're, and if you're doing a private access way, it's 19-7-9B. And if you are, have access to more than one lot, the same exact section then kicks you into the subdivision ordinance. Okay. So but, we're, we're in both places. And the public so then has been given notice. Okay. So we have covered that. Um, again on the sprinklers? Can we, we require have the sprinkler based on unusual topography or length of the access way? No? I, there's nothing in here that says you can. If, if you ask for it and the applicant doesn't fight you on it, then yes, you can do it. The applicant has something to say. <laughs> well, the applicant is standing by the podium. Would you like to address any questions or make any comments on what you've heard? Yes, thank you. Um, my, my only concern about this whole discussion uh, in the potential changing of the roadway to an access way application uh, was partially answered by the question about public notification um, so that was answered. Um, although the priors who live out of state um, are elderly, don't really keep up with, with things, I, I would feel a little bit concerned about um, um, appropriate notification to them, um, which really leads me to the, the, the corollary question. If we proceed it with an application for a private access way, and in the future, the priors wanted to develop those two grandfather lots, would there be a means for them to approach this council for uh, a change to a private roadway up to their lots? Yes. They'd get to go through this process. Okay. Great. Thank you. And, and it sounds like they'd have to go through the process anyway if we um, granted a waiver. Right. Okay. So. Great. Thank you. Uh, would you like to continue or would you like to table this if you want the priors to? I mean, I, I'm, whatever you'd like to do. It's, it's been one of those evenings. So if you do, you want to continue on looking at this as a private access way or? Can I bring you back to the podium? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the prize understand the difference between an access way, private access way, and a private roadway. Okay. Um, um, I'm again trying to keep their interests at, at heart here and make sure that uh, there's no decision made contrary to their interests. So, if, if the best approach would be to table this until we have an, an opportunity to speak with them, then we ought to probably go that. Route. So are you asking at this point to table, or? What's your desire? It's your, it's your land. All right, so then we would request to table the, the application. OK. Then, um, would anyone like to make a motion at this point? Can it, uh, should yeah, we do a site visit? Is it too late to do that? Because it seems like no, it's not. Not if it's being tabled. I would say we could do that site walk. Then, at this point, would anyone like to make a site walk? I'll move to table it till the applicant requests rescheduling. Okay. We have a motion to table it. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, then um, all those in, or any comment on tabling it? Anyone have anything to add? Yeah, I think you're right. Um, thank you. I, 
Would you folks like a, t a site walk? Should we take one? Site walk. I would like a site walk. Liza would. Do I hear a yeah, second? I we have Joe. Um, do I need a, um, a majority or can I just face no, it? Actually, if it's, I mean, a, a site walk is like a planning board meeting. Okay. So if, if the board agrees to schedule a site walk and they just, most people just don't want to show up, you can still have it. Um, the other option is for individual board members to go on their own. But, um, you know, you really should finish all your business on this item before you table discussion of it. So, I mean, it is appropriate to make a decision whether the board is going to officially schedule a sidewalk. Okay. So uh, we would need four to show anyways, right, to continue to be an official board meeting. Yeah, you, you have four as a quorum. Okay. Um, we have two then. I would show up. <laughs> Henry? Okay, so we do have a majority, so let's schedule a site walk. Madam Chairman, could, could yes. we try to schedule it um, before the next submission? Deadline? In advance of the, the end of the month, so that we can make our, submission, our final submission by, in order to get on the December agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you want usually at this time of year you're looking at Saturday morning, unless people are free, say at four in the afternoon. I mean that's it's really dark, still getting, getting too dark. I know. Yeah, that's it's why. Yeah, dark at four. Um, this Saturday is the twenty third. I really don't think you want to do it the Saturday after that. Yeah. No. I'm okay for this Saturday if that's what you want. I can do this Saturday. Saturday's fine with me. I believe I can do Saturday. I'm not available after 9.30, but you don't need me there if you go beyond that. Okay. Uh, is there a certain time, everyone, it works better for them? Whatever. I'm wide open Saturday. Okay. Um, do you Early. want it earlier? Eight nine earlier? Eight o'clock on eight Saturday? Nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time did you say? 8 a.m. Nine. Oh, nine. I'm still having coffee today. That's fine. Do you want to schedule it early I'm if you have five, other appointments? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's not our nine favorite, is but. This, this coming Saturday? Yes, that's this the 23rd. Saturday. Then nine o'clock this Saturday? Does that work for you, John? Yeah. Does that work for the applicants? Nine o'clock this Saturday? Okay. Then we're going to have a site walk this Saturday at nine o'clock. And we'll meet on Reef Road just west of the Ham driveway. Okay. <laughs> what, what number Reef Road is that? I, I don't have the number, but it's just west of the Ham house. Uh, like 10? Six. Okay. Now, before, we do have the motion on the table to table this, but I agree we do need to. If anyone has any other comments before we wrap this up. Do you have any other comments? Or? I have a question. We yes. definitely, have we directed them to apply to, to, to resubmit as a private access way or is that in limbo at this point? It's in limbo. But if they take that suggestion, am I correct that they will have to have essentially a two, they're applying for two things, they're applying for certain amount of feet is a private road and the rest of it is a we private. typically would treat it as a concurrent review they just have to adjust their application the cover letter could reflect they're looking for two different things and and they'd have to change their their um, road section and show us where it would nip in to the private access way section but does the first 50 feet have to meet the private road standards 22 feet and all it, of we'd have to we'd have to massage that a little because it would have to be private, yeah, it would have to be private road until you get past the ham driveway and you haven't given them direction on whether that's a private road meeting the full standards or whether you might be willing to entertain waivers. But it does appear that the first 50 feet is not the problematic section. Does that give the applicants enough of a quid? Is that where the I think you probably need to go with the with a, a design a section of private road that meets the current standard. 
to the Ham's driveway. And then. Yeah. Yes, Elaine. I I'm think sorry. this may be one of their site walks. Microphone. Oh, oh. A microphone. On, I know on prior site walks, we have talked about what we can and can't discuss at a site walk, and the fact that the site walk is only for looking at the physical characteristics of the property. So I would appreciate some guidance as to whether on the site walk we can talk about this question of whether we're more inclined to a private access way or the um, private roadway and it seems to me that that's kind of tricky and so we should know that in advance. I would think that um, as a group if you were out there negotiating what you were interested in that would not be appropriate. If as individuals during the site walk you looked at the area and said this looks like an area to me that could meet the public road standard that might give the applicant guidance. But in fact, in the course of the site walk, we can't say, it seems to me that right now we have a consensus that what we think we're going to be asking for is this combined proposal that would have most of this as a private access way. We couldn't, in the course of that site walk, talk about where our consensus might or might not have shifted. I guess what I'm saying is you can't, as a group, reach, reach consensus on this. Kind of individuals could make comments that could ag aggregate during the site walk to give the applicant appropriate direction. So we could be asked the question during the site walk. <laughs> you feel you might just that. blurt something out. Oh yeah. But we can't. But, but seriously, we can't have a, We can't go to the site and have a discussion of this issue, which I think it may be very tempting to do. Yeah, and I'm saying that that again. I, Having a consensus agreement at the site walk would not be appropriate. Okay. I, yes. One one point related to um, what Peter said about having a roadway until the Ham's house and then an access way. I think I heard um, Chief Gleason say that he was okay with the narrower roadway, 18 feet, to the Ham's house because of its proximity to Reef Road and um, the hydrant. So. Um, if we would be willing to waive the private road standards for just a few feet um, because of Chief Gleason's comments, you know, um, I, don't know, I think that, that would be helpful to the applicant and it's something I would be willing to do. That becomes a precedent and we don't really want to be doing that. I know. I know that. Um, I, so, something we can discuss maybe, but would we want to Victoria. discuss that ahead of time to give the applicant an idea of where to go? Let's see how the board members feel. From what I, from what I heard, and I may have misunderstood, uh, in a private access way, the first 50 feet needs to be paid to a different standard than the rest of the road. Am I correct? Or did yes, I but the thing is usually um, the pavement is supposed to connect to the town road. Okay. So. We're gonna, like I said, we're going to have to massage that a little. So I guess I don't want to give somebody the idea that that's going to be the case until we see what we're talking about. Okay. So we're doing a site walk, and I'm not willing to give anyone that direction until I see the site. Yep, makes sense. Okay. Any other comments? Anything from the applicant? this point no then we will be having our site walk we do have the motion on the table to table this to the next meeting and did we have a second we had a second from Elaine okay then at this time we're ready to vote all those in favor of the motion to table this to our next regularly scheduled meeting okay all those opposed so this is passed this will be um, scheduled again uh, for next month I'm sorry I don't have that date you know yes, the be? December meeting is uh, December 17th. The 17th. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the comments that we have received tonight. It's been very beneficial. Okay. At this point, then. At this point, we would um, hear from any public comments on items not on tonight's agenda. Um, for the record, there is no one else in the chamber halls. So we'll pass on that and just go right into adjournment. And um, anyone want to adjourn? Yes, a second on adjournment. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you.